God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? It's a Wednesday morning, 5.45 a.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you. If this is your first time, we are out of New Orleans. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. I am Apostle Robert Jenkins, and as always, me and my wife I'd like to take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate all those who support us with your prayers, uh, with you listening to the videotapes and sharing it on your page. God bless you. Good to see you, Sister Vicar. God bless you, God bless you, praying for you, praying with you, and it's a, it's a privilege to be able to know what God is doing in the body of Christ. Sister Williams, thank you for all that you do. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. Mac Pear, God bless you. Sister Sandra, God bless you. Sister Bridget, Sister Fox, been missing you. God bless you. God bless you. Loretta Harmon, old friend. Hallelujah. Tell your brother Willie I said hello. God bless you. And your mom and pops. I don't know if they're both still alive, but I remember your dad at Union Baptist Church. And so God bless you. God bless everybody. Let's get ready. We're going to go into part five today. Living while raising Cain, a life-changing message. Please uh, revisit these teachings on a regular basis. They will bless you. They will change your life. They are really the solution to life, how to handle the mystery of all things is, is being taught in these texts. God is giving us some rich word. God bless you, my brother, Brother Reno. God bless you, man of God. So we're going to go into prayer. We are a people of prayer, a people of praise, and a people of power. We also are a people of faith, God's favor, and God's finances. So we're going to begin to pray. I uh, have a lot of things to share with you today. We're going to go to the spiritual bank, which I call the word of God. I believe the word of God is a spiritual bank. And we're going to go to the spiritual bank today and just invest, make a withdrawal, and then invest with it to our spirit. And so whenever you read the word of God, that is the spiritual bank. And when you make a withdrawal uh, from that bank, and then you invest what you've learned into your own spirit. And that's how you grow. Good to see you, Sister Rita Tate. Good to see everybody, Sister Samuel. God bless you. Father, thank you right now for another day. We are honored and privileged to have another day. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for love. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the Holy Ghost who leads us and guides us into all truth. God, we thank you for your kindness, your gentleness. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see a perfect day, a perfect God, for imperfect people. Thank you, Lord, for growth. God, we bless your name for the journey that you have walked with us and you have constantly matured us and grown us up. Thank you, Lord, that we can declare Regardless of how weak we may think we are in the natural, we can declare that we are more than conquerors. Oh, God, we have power, power to walk right, power to talk right. Thank you, Lord, that we have authority over our flesh. We have dominion. Thank you, Lord, over the fish of the sea, fowls of the air, and everything that creeps upon the earth. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us to be fruitful, multiply, and replenish. There is a word over our life that blesses us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Thank you, Lord, that we know that when we take on the mind of Christ, we can be transformed by the renewing of the word. Oh, God, we bless you this morning for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for wisdom and strategies of how to walk this walk out. Oh, God, we pray for the children. We pray for marriages. We pray for leadership. We pray for our country. We pray for those who are in power, in position to make a difference. We, God, we ask you for your wisdom and your understanding. As we begin to execute your plan, God, we thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for healing virtue in our bodies. Oh, God, we bless you for it. We bless you for the strength that you have given us to maintain this ministry, to allow our fruit to remain. And we bless you this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing. You said, Lord, to give you thanks in all things. So we thank you, Lord, for this daily bread. We thank you, Lord, as we partake in this word that you teach us how to live while raising Cain that we understand that at the end we win, at the end we stand, at the end we conquer. Oh God, we thank you for the blood that covers us. We thank you, Lord, for the angels that has been assigned to us to assist us in our assignment and on our journey. Now, Lord, let us be a people of faith, a people of finance, and a people of favor. Allow your goodness and your mercy to follow us all the days of our lives. Allow your glory to be revealed in our lives. Lord, don't let us say anything today that displeases you. Allow us to give you glory with our lips, God. 
to give you praise, God, and give you honor. We thank you, Lord. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We declare you as our God. Oh, God, we thank you, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We thank you, Lord, for increase in our life, increase of power, increase of knowledge. We thank you, Lord, that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. We thank you, Lord, for spiritual strength to sustain us, God, and maintain us, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, that you have called us friends and that you show us the mystery of your glory. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for reconciliation. Thank you, Lord, for the ministry of reconciliation. Thank you, Lord, that somebody today will cry and bow on their knees and confess that you are Lord, that the saving power is still alive. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you cover us, that we have a cloud by day and a fire by night. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for your anointing that is on our lives. Thank you for the doors that are being opened. Thank you for the doors that are being closed. Thank you, Lord, for the bridges that allow us to cross over. We thank you, Lord, that you listen to us and we can pray and you give us the power to align ourselves up to your will. We agree with you. Thank you, Lord, for the yes that is in our spirit. Oh, God, we bless your name. There's a yes in our spirit to your will and to your way. And through your word, God, we thank you. You'll see your word as a two-edged sword. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Oh, God, we can put on the, the peace, God. Oh, God, in our shoes, God, we thank you that our loins are girded about with truth. Oh, God, and we bless you for this great day that you have made. Our steps are ordered by the Lord, and we thank you, Lord, hallelujah, that your word has become a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We thank you, Lord, that when you release your word, it will heal us, that we are emotionally being healed, spiritually being healed. We're being set free. Our sons and daughters are being set free from the prisons of their minds. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, I feel your spirit moving, cutting us loose from bondage, cutting us loose from error, cutting us loose from religion, and causes us to, to walk with you and to have a relationship with you and to come to know you, God, in the power of your resurrection and in the fellowship of your suffering. Thank you, Lord, for this divine intake. Oh, God, for this divine impartation, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for this divine insight that we can see in foresight and hindsight. Oh God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. That we don't have to worry for you cover us. Your love covers the multitudes of folk. Oh God, we thank you for your eternal and everlasting God. Then when we were down in our worst, God, you picked us up. We heard your voice. You called our name, God. We have been chosen by you anointed and appointed to do your assignment, God. Cause us to be faithful that one day we can hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. We come as humble as we know how, God, at your feet saying, teach us, feed us until we want no more. And God, we bless your name for you said, he that hungers and thirsts for righteousness shall be filled. Oh, God, we bless your name. You're going to fill us today. You're going to fill us today. You're going to give us what we need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. We shall be like a tree planted by the rivers and whatever we do shall prosper. Thank you, Lord, because we have delighted ourselves in you. You'll give us the desires of our heart and our heart is to please you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, your gentleness, your kindness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, for eyesight, hallelujah, ears to hear, oh God, hallelujah, thank you for the gathering of the saints, and we bless your name for it, oh God, we honor you today, now have your way, speak to this clay, mold it, God, that it reflects the glory that's in heaven, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth and in earth and through earth, through us, we are yielded vessels today, and say, we say, God, have your way, thank you, we assign angels to our mind, north, east, south, and west. And we bless you for it. It is done. It is complete. Make your request known unto the Lord. For when you pray, know that your prayer has already been heard. God knows what you need before you ask. And so when you ask, you ask in faith, in alignment to what has already been done. And we thank you, Lord, for the release of your glory in our lives every day. For the release of your glory in our lives every day. Thank you, Jesus. By your nature, all things are accomplished. Amen. God bless you. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. Uh, we're going to walk uh, in this part five called Living While Raising Cain. Thank everybody for last night. A tremendous, a tremendous teaching. If you did not get a chance to come on in my father's house with me and Prophet James Summers, we talked about the watchman in the gates keeper yesterday. It was a outstanding pour of, of information. 
uh, in revelation of how to be a gatekeeper. If you did not watch that, please go to my page or his page or even our wives page and you'll be able to hear that. That will be a life changing message. We are continuing on with that for next month until the Lord tell us to change. Uh, we're going to be doing that. Those lessons will help you uh, for those who are gifted, for those who have insight, for those who are having dreams and visions of different things you may not understand. God is, is helping us to unfold the mysteries of a gatekeeper and the watchman. So please do that. Thank you for your support. It was tremendous yesterday. And please watch it and share it uh, with others. God bless everybody. Sister Jan, Brother Michael Logan, God bless you. Now today we're going to walk into part five with living while raising Cain. Uh, let's walk, let's go to the spiritual bank. This Bible, uh, to me, is the spiritual bank. And so we're going to go into the spiritual bank today and we're going to make a withdrawal. We're going to withdraw from the word and then we're going to allow, the, we're going to take what we learn from this bank, what we, what we withdraw, the money, the real life currency of the, of the Christian walk. And we're going to invest into our spirit. You must be a, a investor. You must be a investor. And every time you read this Bible and you apply it to your life, you gurgitate it, you eat it, you are investing in your spirit. And when you invest into your spirit, you'll see the growth of your investment. You'll see your investment grow. So let's go to the spiritual bank today. And I want to go through three major scriptures and then we'll walk down the points. The first one I want to go to is Romans 8.28. This is something that you should know and memorize. You should have many scriptures that are memor that you memorize in your in your spirit that you're pregnant by okay you want to learn it and you want to add new scriptures to your vocabulary new scriptures to your spirit you want to store up like when you go to the grocery store and you buy food and you put it in your cabinet you got to have spiritual food that is stored in your spirit so when god needs to cook a meal from you he can pull those scriptures out of your spirit and begin to cook which is cooking is nothing but a revelation when you when you when you when it's revealed to you what god is saying that's cooking and so god wants to cook that's the revelation of it but he can't cook if the if the storehouse is not full that's what and i don't want to get into that but the real understanding of tithes is how to build a storehouse how to have more than enough so that the people will not starve within the city so the leadership would not starve so leadership must know how to build storehouses and how to bring that spiritual word rich into your spirit so that when people are in need of a word, you have a word to give them, okay? So this is very, 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 very important. And we're going to go to Romans chapter 8. Let's go to the spiritual bank and let's make our first investment today. Uh, I constantly try to add scriptures to my life and now I'm studying even vocabulary words and, and different things like that so my vocabulary can be increased because I want God to use me uh, to the maximum. I want to maximize everything that God intended for me. Okay, so Romans 8.28 is the first one and I'm giving you the scriptures because when you understand these three investments today, I'm going to give you three scriptures for your investments. When you understand these investments, this will give you security. It will give you insurance and assurance of how to live with Cain and how to live your life with all the difficulties that come along with it, your lows, your highs, your in-betweens, your ups, your downs, you'll be able to let your joy remain. Your fruit will remain when you have an understanding. These three investments, okay, in the building of God, okay, in building the kingdom of God, they will sustain you. And so you won't panic. You'll be able to allow patience to have a perfect work. Okay, and so you'll be able to to sleep on the boat when it's full of water and you'll be able to rest. There is a place in God where you can rest, where you cannot be troubled by what you're in. You can be in trouble, but not be troubled by what you're in. And so this is very key. And so when you understand these three investments, my mom going to call you. You've been on my mind and Adam's on my mind, so I have to call you. I meant to do it yesterday, but I got busy. I love you. So these three investments are so important, okay? And so I want you to understand those three investments. The first one is Romans 8.28. When you really understand this, then you'll be able to handle your lows, your highs. You'll be able to understand when things, your journey, sometimes you are in a journey, you are in a pig's pen. You're going to come out. You will be going home to the Father. You got to understand that, okay? And this helps you understand the things that you've been through in life. 
the things that you've been through in life. You can't change what you've been through, but you can change how they've been through you. You can't change what you've been through, but you can change how they've been through you, okay? you If you change the way you see things, the way you see things will change. If you change the way you see things, not the way they happen, but the way you see them. And when you change the way you see things, then the way you see things will change, okay? Very key. Romans 8, 28. Very, very uh, familiar passage of scripture, but I want you to understand this. And I want you to think about all your pain experiences, all the things that goes on in life. Your ups and your downs, but remember this scripture. And we know that all things, things, when I was going to school and I love learning, education is so important to me. And when I understood a noun, person, place, or thing, it names a person, place, or thing, okay? Person, place, or thing. So we know that all things work together for good. Not the good, but for good. Good is nothing but a... The the word good in its original origin, which is called etymology, in the etymology of the word, ek means out of, monology means study of, in, in the origin of something, it really means God. So when we say good morning, the real meaning was that is God. Let God be in your morning. Good morning. That's why I said there's none good but the Father, because good really refers to God's will, when something is good. And when God made the first day and he said, and it was good. It was good. It was God. It was God's dealing. It was God's doing. And when you understand, this is very key, when you really understand that everything in your life is really God's doing to bring you to a complete end. It is God's doing. That's why it's good. And he made it and it was good because it was in God's will. And so when you understand that your life is really not in your hands, your life is in God's hands. And so all things are working together. This helps you relax because there's some things in your life, your perception of some things will cause to bring depth to your own. You bring depth to yourself. You'll separate yourself because you're seeing it wrong. And so your perception is bringing depth to you. Your knowledge is bringing depth to you. But when you understand that all things work together for good, for God, for God's will. This is why I go on to say, for good to them who love God. You understand this. You understand that we know there's some things that through the intimacy of God, through walking with God, through making love with God, is you know. This knowing is the experience. You can know something theoretically, but not know it experientially. But when you walk with God, that's why he goes, and we know. I've been through a lot of things. If anybody been through a lot of things, Apostle Paul had been through a lot of things. But he understood all the things that I've been through. Even my past life as Saul was working up to becoming Paul. See? And so you have to realize that even though you may have a cane in your life, you may be controlled by some cane mentalities. God is going to take every negative and bring it a positive. I told you, the whole purpose of negative in your life, quit tripping over your negatives. Quit tripping over your cane. Learn to develop your negatives. They call negatives because they're not developed. Not because they are negatives, but they're negatives because they're not developed. A negative is it's only a positive that is not developed. That's all it is. Darkness is only a place where light is not. But the, but once light show up, watch this, then you go out of darkness into the marvelous light. You come out of Egypt into the promised land. And so when you understand that this journey that we go on, that because don't let the devil kill you. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, not after Cain, but after the spirit, after the principles of Abel. When you understand this, then everything that the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. For good, because all things work together for good. God's will will be complete in your life. And when you understand that, it gives you peace in the midst of the journey. It is the peace that passeth all understandings. And people may not understand, how can you hold on when you're going through so much and you're being pressed down, you're being oppressed and repressed, but you make it because you know that at the end of this day, this very thing that looked like it's going to take me out will lift me up. 
This very thing that looked like it would take me down will reveal me. This very crushing that I'm going through will produce oil. This coal that is going through pressure will come out as a diamond. Why? Because all things, and we know, we are convinced we have walked with God long enough to know without a shadow of a doubt that devil, you can't fool me with Cain experiences because at the end, God will take the very thing that should have destroyed me and caused me to elevate. This pressure will produce something. So we know, and this is the investment. You must invest. Take this first deposit out of your spiritual bank account and make an investment in your spirit and tell your spirit daily on a daily basis you got to invest into who you are. You have to invest into you, invest into your mind, and you have to put principles in your mind to become rich. I am rich, rich with God because I have a word over my life. Real, real richness come from the word that's over your life. And God blessed them. What did he bless them with in Genesis chapter 1? He bless them with a word. And when you have a word, you can be fruitful. You can replenish. You can multiply. You can have dominion. Why? Because you're rich with a word over your life. You got to know there's a word over your life. And that word is that all things, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call. I am the call. I am the elect. I am chosen. I am peculiar. Before I was in my mother's womb, according to his purpose, according to his purpose, because God has a purpose for my life, I am part of his purpose. All things work together for good. And I know that. And so it don't matter. That's why I can live while raising Cain. You are going to have Cain, whether in your children, in your own life, in your marriage, but it doesn't stop you from living. It doesn't stop you from being an overcomer. It doesn't stop you from being strong. You can live with it. And, I'm a, and whether you know it or not, it's really all a part of God's plan. It is your push. You need a push. You can't deliver a baby without a push. And there are things God wants you to deliver, but he has to put pain that caused you to push. It's called labor pains. Cain is a labor pain to push some things out of you. Ooh! And when you see that, you learn to rejoice. When you lift weights, I used to love to lift weights, and God was talking to me about getting back even in shape, not going to the gym, but beginning to do some push-ups and things like that because I need, my body has to be at another level because of the level of my teaching. Uh, and, and he's letting me know that. Uh, and so, but in that, you understand that when pain comes, when you're working out, it is a sign that weakness is leaving. Pain is a sign that weakness is leaving. It's part of it. No pain, no gain. And so we understand that. That's what we know. So that's the first investment for this morning. So when I teach the rest of this lesson, you'll be able to relax during the journey. Okay? Very key. The next investment I want to take you to, let's go to the bank again. Let's go to First Thessalonians. I want to show you something. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 18. Come on, let's make another investment. Let's invest into our spiritual growth. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. I love this verse. I want you to learn this verse, digest this verse, and let it become a part of your spirit. Watch, it says, in everything. Did you hear that? In everything, whether it's a Cain, whether it's an Abel whether it's Ishmael, whether it's Isaac, in everything, give thanks. Why? Why? Watch this. In everything, give thanks. Good to see you, Brother Gilbert. In everything, give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, listen to this Bible verse. We're in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. If you're just coming on, please share this on your page. Let's Let's make this 100 shares today. Let's reach the world. Watch this. In everything, good to see you. Watch this. In everything, give thanks. Why give thanks in everything? For this is the will of God. Okay? In Christ, in this mindset, the crystal mindset, con Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, does it, does it make sense to give thanks in everything? I've heard one theologian say we give thanks in everything, but not for everything. Well, let's go deeper. Why would God tell you to give thanks? Worship 
is the key to life in the spiritual. In the spiritual, worship is the key. When we're giving thanks, worship, thanks is a part of worship. We're thanking God in everything. Why thank God for everything? Watch this. For this is the will of the Lord. Now, a lot of times we, we put more emphasis on give thanks in everything. But really the emphasis is not in giving thanks in everything. There are many things in your life that your flesh came is going to fight you. Why would you give thanks in that? That don't look positive. But it's not about that. The real revelation is because, watch this, in everything is the will of the Lord. In other words, God is in control of all things. All things work together for the good. And so when you know that everything involves God's will, God's will is in everything. So since God's will, this is the will of the Lord. What's the will of the Lord? Everything you're going through, everything you ever can experience. God is using all things. And so when you know that everything is working the will of God, then I give thanks. Why? Because the will of God is being worked in my life. When you know that, you can handle your falls. You can handle your disappointments. You can handle your adversities. Why? Because in all things, the will of God is there. So I'm going to give thanks. I'm going to give thanks that this is only bringing me to a complete end. This is only bringing me to a point. Oh, God. There you go, Brother Michael. I tell you, man, me and you got to talk because you be beating me to the punch. Okay. Helping me preach. But you're right. But you got a glory in tribulation. Glory in tribulations. So it's so important that we understand in all things, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God. What's the will of God? Everything is the will of God. It's working towards God's will. There's nothing being done that God don't know. And whom he foreknew, he predestined. You got to realize that he's all-knowing. He's in charge. Hallelujah. He's in charge of it all. And so when you understand that, now how you see things will change because, watch this, watch this, because you change how you see things. You don't see it as a negative. Cain is not a negative. Cain is a negative that needs to be, need to be developed, but not a negative as a negative, but a negative that needs to be developed as a positive. I know the picture. God took the picture, but the development of it is called negatives, but it's the same picture as the positive. Why? Because the negative and the positive is in all things. There are ups, there are lows and highs. There are heaven and earth. Uh-oh. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. So when I understand that, I can all know my first investment was Romans 8.28. All things work together. My second investment is I'm going to give thanks even for the things that look like it's killing me. Even the things that look like I cannot conquer. Even the things that look like I'm not going to make it. Even in the things I have seen to fail in, I'm going to give thanks because this is the will of God. What's the will of God? Everything that's working in your life is working according to his will. It's going to bring you to a point you don't understand the mystery of God's will. And when you think you're making a mistake, it's bringing you to a place. When your brothers are thinking they're putting you in a pit, they're putting you in God's will. Oh, they put Joseph in the pit. But God said, I need you in the pit. I need you to go to prison so I can put you in the palace. Uh oh, uh oh, somebody going to put you in the fiery furnace. I need you to be in the fiery furnace so that when he looks in, he'll see the fourth one look like the son of God. Somebody putting you in the lion's den. I need you to be in the lion's den so you can know that I am a God that saves. Uh-oh, you better know that all things work together. I know you look like you don't want to go to Nineveh. I have prepared, I have prepared a fish to swallow you, but, but no, open his mouth but not swallow you. And you're going to be sometimes three days in a fish but you're going to get back in one day's journey. Why? Because it was my will for you to get to Nineveh and even though it looked like you fought, you resisted, you had experience, it looked like you went to hell Look like you died, Lazarus, when the sickness was not unto death. But I raised you on the fourth day. Why? Because my will will be done. So I have uh, some investments today. And one thing I know, that the, uh, after the rest of this lesson, it don't matter where I am in life, I will give thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God. Woo! You better know it. That's your second investment. We're making investments. We're going to the spiritual bank. The word of God, we are making a withdrawal and then we will invest, take the word of God and invest into your spirit. Did you get it? First investment, Romans 8, 28. Second investment, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And in all things, 
Are you missing the lesson because you don't know how? You don't know how to see all things, the will of God in all things? That's the question. Do you know how to see the will of God in all things? Do you know how to see the will of God in all things? All right, last investment. Ephesians chapter 3. It's the last investment, then we're going to go on to the point today. Ephesians chapter 3. Let's start at verse 8, because I want you to understand this today, okay? This is going to help understand the lesson as I begin to teach about Cain, okay? Because we, we you're, you're being defeated by the way you're seeing your life. You're not ever defeated, but you're being defeated by your own perceptions. If you change the way you see things, the way you see things will change. Verse number 8. Unto me, we in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8 through uh, 8 through 21, okay? We go into the spiritual bank today to make a withdrawal so we can invest into our spiritual growth. Unto me, who am the least, who am least than, the, who is less than the least of all the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Now, the whole teaching of Cain, living while raising Cain, it's to bring you into the riches, the unsearchable riches of Christ. There's so much revelation in what we go through, but most of the time we don't get the lesson out of what we're going through. We complain so much about the pain that we missed what we're going through. But the whole purpose of it is to wake us up. Uh, something I've learned, and I shared this with Brother Gilbert yesterday, and also I think I shared it with my wife. Uh, in our house, we have smoke detectors. And in those smoke detectors, they are designed in the house and we have a rental property and we had to have those in the house. Now, many times when you're cooking and the fire may be too high, the smoke uh, comes up. Or even if there's a fire in the house, the smoke detectors go off. When the smoke detectors go off, it makes a loud noise. Now, a lot of times in our life, our emotions, what we're feeling, go off as smoke detectors. I want you to understand that your, your emotions are nothing but smoke detectors. The real purpose of why God gave you a gave you a, a, a emotion. Why did God give us a emotion? We have three departments in the mind. It is the emotion, how we feel. It is the intellect, how we think and reason. It is the will based upon the choices we're able to make. Okay? Those three, why do we need the emotion? A lot of people say you're in your emotions, you're in your feelings. Your emotions are the smoke detector. Now, when the smoke detector go off, do not attack the smoke detector. Do not beat up the smoke detector. Sometimes when the smoke detector go off, it, it makes so much noise. We have learned how to live with the noise. And so we never fix the fire that is in our lives because we've learned to live with the noise of our emotions. And so we say, that's just the way I am. I'm very emotional. But the emotions was there to tell you not to come to the smoke detector, but to find the fire, find the real issue. The real issue is not the smoke detector. The real issue is the fire. But the smoke detector is what makes the noise. And because the smoke detector makes the noise, we try to fix the smoke detector when it's not broke. We say we are emotionally unstable. You're not unstable. Your smoke detector is telling you that he sits. It sits. It's a signal that says something is burning outside of its normal use. Something is on fire. And so, but if we if we don't learn how, and most of we've learned how to ignore the noise. Watch this. Or we turn up something else louder than the smoke detector. When I used to drive my car and the muffler was loud, I would just turn my music on as soon as I get in the car. So that the music that was pleasure to me will override the noise that would irritate to me. And so a lot of times our emotion is making noise, but we have a louder noise that we focus on so that we don't hear the smoke detector. Okay? 
So a lot of times we do that. Or what we do is we take the battery out of the smoke detector. We literally kill our emotions. We, we, we cut off the nervous system so that we can never hear the noise of our emotions. But the problem is that the fire is still in the house. There is a fire going on in your marriage. There's a fire going on in your life. You got to know how to, to respond to the smoke detector, but find the fire. This is so important. These scriptures that I'm dealing with, when he talks about the unsearchable, there's a place in God that shows you how to put out the fires in your life, how to handle the canes that start fires in your life. But you gotta, you can't ignore the smoke detectors. But stop beating up the smoke detectors. Stop sending the smoke detectors to hell. Stop saying the smoke detector is crazy. Because the smoke detector, there's nothing wrong with the smoke detector. The problem is that it's pointing you to another issue. And most of the time we ignore the real fires, the real canes, because religion told us don't deal with fires. Just stop the noise. Don't deal with fires. Just learn to ignore the noise. Get used to the noise that is a part of your system. My friend, he told me that he smoked the tuck to be going off and he'd be on the phone and his friends would say to him, Hey, what's that noise in the background? He would say, oh, that's just my smoke detector. He said he had his smoke detector. The battery was low. It had been beeping for years. And he just got so used to the beep that he didn't even hear it anymore. He had to be on the phone with somebody else to remind him, hey, what's that noise in your house? And sometimes God would send people, send a word to say, what's that noise in your, in your house? That noise is saying that your smoke detector is saying, I cannot function properly to help you identify your fires. The unsearchable riches of God help us find out the fires. Okay? Very key. Watch this. He says, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Now, I'm helping you with something right here. Because, and I hope I get to it today, when we understand this this, this mystery of how to raise Cain, it's going to bring you into fellowship with some things that you have been ignoring. There is a fellowship that you have to learn through your suffering. There's a fellowship you have to learn through your past. You cannot regret everything you've been through or things that happened to you. You have to come to grips with it. And so there is some unsearchable riches of Christ, that, but you learn them through what you've been through. You learn them through attending to the fires. Confessing that there is a fire in my life. Being honest about the fires that are burning up some things in your life. And stop ignoring the smoke detectors because you don't want to deal with a fire. Or you, watch this, love to just condition yourself to handle noise. Okay? Watch this. And to make all men see what is the fellowship. Cain helps you see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Of you being divine in a human body. You being spiritual but placed in humanity. You having a Cain and an Abel within one house. It helps you deal with the mystery of this dichotomy. Okay? That works together. That I am, I am, I have a treasure in earth in vessels. What part of me is weak, other part of me is strong. One part of me knows nothing, the other part of me knows it all. And when I understand who I am in the spiritual, but also who I am in the earth realm, I can fulfill my mission because I understand the fellowship of the mystery. Woo! Watch this. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Watch this. Which from the beginning, we are in Ephesians, we are in chapter 3, we're in verse 9 now. If you, haven't hit that, if you haven't hit that share button, go ahead and hit it for me, okay? Which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, this mystery of how to handle our lives. Watch this. Watch this. Was hid in God from the beginning. God knew Adam was going to fall. It was a part of God's plan to bring us into. Now they are like us. God wanted us to be like him from both arenas from the spiritual and the natural. This is why he chose dirt to make us a form out of, because I'm going to put you in the earth, on the earth, to rule the earth. So now they like us knowing good and evil. Your cane is not an enemy. Your cane is part of your process. 
When you understand your Cain and the mentality and religion, when you really understand religion, it should help you have a better relationship. When you really understand the dirt, it helps you grow the flower. When you really understand the fall, it creates a greater, a greater stand. When you really understand the negatives, then you can develop them into positive. When you really understand the stumbling block, you also understand the standing ground. When you really understand, watch this, the rejection, do you also understand how to be accepted? And this is so key. When you understand what God doesn't want, you all, now you know what God does. When you eliminate what not to do, it leaves what to do. And so when you understand this, this is the mystery of it. And so Cain no longer makes me condemn. Cain no longer makes me feel unworthy. Cain reveals to me that there's something rich in me and God trying to pull it out. Ooh. Okay. He hid in God. Watch this. Who created, watch this, all things. He created all things. By Jesus Christ. Everything that was created was created by him. And was not anything made. It was not made by him. All things. And we know that all things. And in everything we give thanks. For this is the will of God. What's the will of God? That he uses all things to bring you to his purpose. He uses all things to bring you to what you're called to be. So there's nothing that you've been through, nothing that you experienced that's not going to push the diamond out. All things, because it was here in him. You got to know God ain't just using the good. He can take the bad. He can take, there's an ingredient in salt that alone going to kill you. But if you mix it with some other ingredients, it will bring healthy health to your body. God says, I'm going to take the negative, mix it with the salt, mix it with the pepper, Mix it with the flour, mix it with this, and when I'm done, you're gonna own taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good. Why? Because I fell, but he picked me up. He's good because when I was in a pig's pen, he brought back to my mind that I have a father. When, when how do I know that he's good? Because when it was bad, he never left me nor forsake me. This is how I know. Good to see you, Bishop. God bless you. See? It was here. This is the mystery. And when you understand this, then you can live while raising Cain. Cain don't stop nothing. Cain, matter of fact, helps produce it. You got to quit thinking the things that happen to you will destroy you. God says, I need to elevate you. Whenever God wants to replant you as a plant, you know, me and my wife, we do stuff in the yard, and I, I, I have come to love outside. I've come to love flowers and all these different things. But I realize that when I want the flower to grow and it has outgrown the pot that it's in, in order for me to have it to grow, I got to get a bigger pot and I got to get more dirt. There's some dirt that has been added to your life, revealed to your life. It ain't in your life to kill you. It's in your life to grow you up, to mature you. And so in order for the plant to grow, you got to add more dirt. God says there is more dirt. There's another cane in your life. There's more mentality that I'm going to use to fertilize the very thing that we're trying to get to grow. Ooh, you better go to shouting. I feel the Holy Ghost. See? It was hidden in God because it's in all things. Give thanks in all things for this is the will of God. What's the will of God? All things. God ain't intimidated because you fail. Don't nothing change because you made a mistake. Don't nothing change because you murdered a man, Moses. Go and say, let my people go. Don't nothing change. Come on. See? The land is still yours. You, God not intimidated because there's giants. I have equipped you. Your weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God. And the enemy don't want you, he, he don't want you to see your falls as part of his plan because he's hoping that the falls discourage you. But it would, the, the falls should encourage you. Everything you ever fail in should be your encouragement that you are valuable. Why? Because the fall didn't kill you. How can you not be strong when you survive the fail? You survived the rape. You, oh, you're still in your right mind after all you've been through. Because all things, in all things, give thanks. For this is the will of God. What's the will of God? All things was not anything created that was not created by God. God don't need everything good to be good. God can make something sweet out of something that was bitter. Oh, because he's that type of God. <laughs> everything has God's fingerprints on it. 
everything has God's fingerprint. Now, I don't want to go too deep, but I love aerodynamics. I love to study that. I love to study quantum physics, and I used to really study it. I don't study as much, but I love it. But when you understand quantum physics, it really helps you understand faith. Because in every matter, even in wood or walls or whatever, uh, everything boils down to, uh, to, to atoms, breaks down into cells, breaks down into atoms, and is made of two things. At the end of the day, even a chair or anything you're sitting on, you really shouldn't be able to sit on it because it's nothing but energy. It's matter, but it's moving at a pace. It's moving at a pace that it looks solid. Jesus was able to walk through walls because he could he could he could slow it down. Watch this. Hey, I don't want to get too deep on you, but he could do it so he can walk through it. Okay, and so in everything is God's finger because God created everything, which means faith is in all things. They'll tell you this if you study quantum physics. That in one drop of water, there's enough faith in it. There's Latin power, Latin power in one drop of water that it could blow up a 10-story building if we knew how to withdraw it from the water. That's why if you say to the mountain, by faith, you can speak to the mountain because in faith is language or is the keys to unlock all things. If there's a connection by faith, I don't want to go too deep, but the point I'm trying to go to you is that all things has God's fingerprint on it. Okay, has God's fingerprint on it, has God's signature on it, all things, you hear that? All things has God's energy on it, everything is either energy or it has a information in it, it has a mind in it. This is why you can take a pill and it knows exactly where to go to remove the headache. This is why your body operates under a program that's been programmed by God. So your eyes know how to look, really we see upside down. But when it comes, it flips it up and we see upside up. But really, if you study eyes, how it really sees, how the body works, the intestines, the liver, how does a bird know how to fly? How does a tree, an apple seed knows how to produce this tree that produces apples? How do the roses know how to grow? Because everything has God's fingerprint on it. Everything has God's atoms in it. Everything has God's energy in it. Now, when you know that everything has God's fingerprint on it, when you believe by faith that all things work together, then you understand that God is in it. Regardless of what it is, God is in it. Because what's not anything made, John 1, in the beginning was the word. A word is in everything. That's how things know how to be things. What are we talking? That's, that's right, mama. It's his handiwork. Things are in it. So electricity has God's God is in it. So that's how we're able to talk on the phone. Because God puts some in it. All we do is study God. When you study things, you're really studying God. If you study the moon, the stars, you're studying God's handiwork. When you understand that everything has God's signature in it, then you understand, watch this, that God is working in everything. In everything. Did you get it? Because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was God. Watch this, watch this. And everything that was made was made by him. It was not anything made. It was not made. Why do you think what you're going through don't have God's signature on it? Because he allowed nothing to be in the earth that it doesn't have his fingerprints. Which means if you can locate what he touched, you can locate the purpose of it. This is the thing. When you locate his touch, his fingerprints, in his fingerprints is the purpose of it. Uh-oh. So now, what you've been through, Cain has a purpose. This is heavy. The devil has a purpose. Demonic principalities have a purpose. When you know how to see God's original intent of all things, then you know you don't lose. Okay, man, my time is flying. Watch this. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. To, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hidden in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the intent. Now, you might have thought, okay, he went too heavy, went too deep. I don't know if that's true. So if you read it, because a lot of times we don't believe it unless we, unless we read it. Here it is. Verse 10. To the intent, that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places, 
might be known, might be known what? By the church, the manifold wisdom of God. I'm going to say it again. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and power. Principalities is only principles in places. Principalities. Palace, place, prince, principles. Principalities are only principles in places. They are principles in high places that God revealed. I talked a little bit about that yesterday with the uh, with the gatekeepers and the watchmen. They're able to see afar off. Their vision shows the principalities. Principles in place. When you pull down principalities, you're only pulling down principles in high places. Watch this. Principles in power in heavenly places might be made known by the church. We as the church should reveal to the world the mystery of how to live. The world don't know how to live with Cain, so they, they try to drug Cain. Oh, or they allow Cain to lead them, and so Cain will lead you to death. It'll lead you to alcoholism. It'll lead you to depression. It'll lead you to deny your real calling. But the whole purpose of the church is to reveal the reason for Cain and know how to use Cain. Watch this. To bring God glory. Your body can give God glory if you knew, have an understanding of why Cain is in my life. Why are these negatives a part of my life? Why did I have the experience what I experienced from my mother, from my father, from my country, from my city? You better know the purpose of it. The purpose of you being who you are, why you went through what you went through, why you're going through what you went Because why? Because through that, you revealed the manifold, uh, manifold wisdom of God. Okay? Might be known by the church. Who's the church? We are the call out ones. What, what should we make known to us? What should be known to us? The manifold wisdom of God. The wisdom of how God used the positive and the negative. The wisdom of how God uses the Cain and the Abel. The wisdom of how God uses spirit and dust. The wisdom to know how God does it. How God takes the negative and makes it the positive. How God takes clay and makes a man of God. How God does it. The mystery of it. Of how God takes two fish and five loaves of bread and feed 5,000. The mystery of it. The mystery, the manifold wisdom of God. The wisdom is application. How God applies what he applies. How he uses, how he works it. How he speaks it. This is what is given to us. And so Cain has a purpose. And when you understand that, Cain going to bring you to death. Cain will help you understand life. When you understand this, you get the manifold wisdom of God. Okay? Ooh, I didn't mean to get loud today. I can't even get to the point. We still investing. We make an investment. According to what? Here it is. Watch this. I didn't make it up. According to the eternal purpose. Wait, wait. You mean to tell me I thought I made a decision? There is an eternal purpose that's working in you whether you know it or not. Working in you whether you know it or not. There is an eternal purpose. You thought you was on the wrong road, but the eternal purpose. Joseph, you thought you was in a pit, but the eternal purpose. The eternal purpose. Saul, you was killing Christians, but there was an the eternal purpose. What's this? According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. He purposed it in Christ. When you put on the mind of Christ, you can understand your cave. When you put on the mind of Christ, you can understand your suffering. For the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Put on the mind of Christ and everything you ever witnessed, ever experienced, will start to make sense. I got it now. God took me this way so I can get this type of strength, so I can produce this type of oil. God allowed this to happen so that I can be elevated here. Now I understand Oh, I got it now. Oh, devil, you made me hate myself because I didn't understand my cane. You had me thinking I was unworthy because I couldn't handle my cane. But when I take on the mind of Christ and renew by the mind of Christ, then I can live with anything that I've been in. Oh, you got it. You got it. Watch this. Here we go. Oh, brother Mike, I hear you. Watch this. Okay. I know it's hard for you to hold it. 
<laughs> Watch this. In whom we have boldness when you receive, when you receive this revelation, this manifold wisdom of the complications of your life. You've been killing yourself, hard on yourself, but when you understand it now, God was trying to bring you to a place, wake you up to something. Watch this. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. The mind of Christ give me boldness. I know what to do with that. I know what to do with it. I thought I was arrogant, but the arrogant was to wake me up of the level of confidence I can practice in God. I thought I was stubborn, but the stubbornness was to wake me up to how I have the ability to stand against the odds when I'm aligning myself up with truth. I thought I was a manipulator, but I learned that I could use that same gift to lead people by the truth when it's submitted unto God. Don't throw away nothing in your life that the devil was using. Learn to give it to God. God wants to use your overconfident in the flesh and let you be overconfident in the spirit. God wants to use your stubbornness that you can't be told nothing to be used and now you're stubborn in the will of God and you won't break for the enemy. God wants to use your 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 way of how you are finesse and you have the gift of God, but he wants to use it so that you can lead people to the promised land. Don't throw it away. Learn to submit it unto God. Cain can be raised by Christ. Uh-oh, you didn't get it. Cain can be raised by Christ. And the very thing that Cain was killing his brother, now he's killing the enemy of his brother. He knows how to murder doubt. He knows how to murder fear. He knows how to murder insecurity. He knows how to separate you from it. Because when Cain get Christ and knows how to offer what Christ requires, now Cain is powerful. Ooh, Jesus. We had Oregon. We'd be shouting right now. <laughs> he says, I have boldness and access. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not. Come on, come on, invest. We're investing this morning. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulation. Quit crying for me. Quit crying for your kids' tribulations. No, the tribulation's going to bring them somewhere. You said they had a testimony. You said they had a calling on their life. Well, why are you, why are you, why are you tripping when they're going through? Why are you tripping when they mess up? This tribulation will bring them, they're building their story. They're building their anointing. The crushing is producing the oil, which you saw has to be crushed. You saw the oil, but we got to crush it. Uh-oh, you saw the flower, but we got to bring the dirt. You got to know. See, he says, look here. I'm in jail when I'm writing this to you, but, 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 don't, but don't weep. Come on. Don't faint. Don't give up hope at my tribulations. He said that I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you. My tribulations is for you. My, my Cain experiences is for you. I'm going through so you can see how to go through. I'm going through so you can see how to go through. I'm overcoming so you can know how to overcome. My tribulation is for you. You going through for somebody else. You experience resurrection for somebody else. You ain't dying for Lazarus. You dying for Mary and Martha. You dying for those who visit the grave. You are being risen for those who didn't believe in it. Come on now. Talk to me. You better believe it. Woo. Oh, which is your glory for this cause. Watch this. Come on, Bishop. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God going to take everything the devil tried to use to ruin your ministry. He going to take everything that tried to ruin your marriage. And God is going to get glory out of it when you know how to not be led by Cain, but know how to raise Cain with Christ. There's nothing that the mindset of Christ cannot use to give God glory. Nothing. Woo! You show me somebody highly anointed, I'll show you somebody who highly full of troubles. You show me somebody who got oil on it, I'll show you somebody who's been crushed. You show me somebody who's been elevated, I'll show you somebody who's been made low. 
Watch this. I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, watch this, according to the riches of his glory. He shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. There's a place in glory that has all the riches. In glory, I have all spiritual blessings. How do I get in glory? You get in glory through your suffering, through your tribulation. Cain takes you to glory. Cain will take you to Christ. If you really face Cain, he going to make you get yourself together with God. And eventually, Cain is going to help you. Watch this. Going to help you bring self into play. Bring your focus into play. But you got to learn from it. You're not going through things to not learn from them. Watch this. In whom the whole world is, whole family's name, that he grants you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. The inner man has to be strengthened, but what, what brings on the strength? The awareness that I need to be strongest from my cane. I'm telling you, I'm only able to tell you the things I'm telling you. I only have the anointing on my life. Go read my book, The Journey of False Perception. I've been through so much. Paul, Paul, when, when, when Paul boasts, he boasts in his suffering. He was shipwrecked, beat, uh, bit by a snake, beaten three times by the Roman government. All these things happened. But he was able to say, I boast, I boast, I boast in my suffering. You think your cane is killing you. Your cane is building your resume for glory because the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. It can't it be revealed through the suffering. The more you suffer, if you suffer with him, you will raise with him. If you, you can't have a resurrection without having a death, you got to die and be buried and then rise again. This is what we go through. So God put us in something that needs to die so that the Christ can live. Woo! Oh! To be sure in a minute, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that you're being rooted and grounded in love. You will never experience to know from experience the, the, the weight of God's love until Cain show up in your life. I know I need Christ. Because Cain let me know. I can't make it without Christ. I'm not good without Christ. I can't preach without Christ. Because Cain will preach for itself. Cain will misuse people. Cain will kill his brother. Cain has hatred. Cain is jealous. Cain is envy. Cain is enmity against God. Cain wants his own territory. But because of Cain in my life, and God kept loving me, God kept chasing me, God kept re re forgiving me, God kept restoring me, let me know there is more to my life than what Cain was revealing. Because I couldn't get God to change his mind about me when I was in full effect as a Cain. I know what it is. A lot of times you are a victim of Cain, but I can tell you the truth. I have been Cain. Have you ever murdered somebody with your words and God forgave you? Have you ever hurt somebody with your preaching and God forgave you? Have you ever been the one that was doing the crime? A lot of times we say I'm the victim, but what if you are the one that has been doing it? I can tell you I am guilty of so many things, but only because of the love of God that kept loving me when I wasn't doing right. I'm not the preacher. I'm not the prodigal son that left the house. I'm his brother lost in the house. Lost while I'm preaching. Lost, lost while I'm teaching. I can tell the truth. Oh, hallelujah. Can be transparent. But because of God's love, I, I am convinced that God loved me because I see him love me when I just came out of the house. I shouldn't have came out of. I saw him love me when I was doing things I had no business doing. I saw him get me out of something he told me not to get into. I saw him pull me out of something. He told me not to go. I saw him fix something. He told me not to break. I saw him, watch this, working out when he never told me to get in it. So I know the love of God that's rooted and grounded, rooted and grounded, rooted and grounded. Why? Because Cain revealed the Christ. It revealed my own wretched man that I am. And when I got through talking to Cain, I said, I can't do it without you. I can't do it without you. I can't do it without you. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I'm a wretch. I'm a sinner. But he said, hey, that's okay. Because there's a Christ for the Cain. There is living 
Oh, oh, there's something living. Even when you look like you've been dead. I heard my name called when Cain had killed my passion. I gave up on church, gave up on people, gave up on marriage. Cain have you quit. Cain have you get tired. Can't have you be a fugitive. You can't get along with nobody. You Don't nobody want to be with you. Don't nobody understand you. But the love of Christ kept coming until I was convinced that there's a Christ behind the cane. And I can live with it. I said, Lord, how do I live with it? Well, I did. How do I live with the memories? How do I live with it? He said, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. You have a K, we have a K, but my grace, is that a license to see it? No, because you got to, through the grace of God, put Cain under subjection. Cain about to pray. Cain is about to go to church. Cain is about to learn worship. Cain go learn his Bible. Uh-oh, Cain is going to learn, learn how to speak in tongues. Oh, Cain is about to be in down. Cain is about to be crushed. Cain is about to understand fasting and prayer. Cain is about to learn, understand love. Cain, uh-oh, Cain going to do everything he didn't want to do. Oh, because Cain has another landlord. There's another landlord. There's another landlord. There's another Lord over the land. There's a Lord over my land, and I'm telling you, when you learn this, when you invest in this, here it go. Let me stop. My time is about up. We didn't even get to the point today. Watch this. Watch this. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend. Why did you go through what you're going through? Why are you living with living while raising Cain? Because Cain will help you do this. Cain will help you be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breath. Cain will show you how deep, wide, high, low God's love is. The breath, the length, the depth, the height, because all things are working. In all things, give thanks. You're going to learn some things about God when, when Cain get through with you. You will learn some things about God. Your ladder should be greater than your former. Saul, you're about to be Paul. Abram, you're about to be Abraham. Simon, you're about to become Peter. Because Cain, go, God going to use it. God is working. God didn't give up. God didn't quit. God was not intimidated. He's going to bring you to a place where you know the breath, the lift, the width, the height. And to know the love of Christ, which passive knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding, not exceedingly, but exceeding, I-N-G, exceeding abundantly, the L-Y is on the abundance, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Unto him, watch this, I'm going to stop right here. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we have to think, according to the power of him, unto him be glory in the church, in you, by Christ Jesus, throughout all ages, world without end. Ooh. I got good news for you. Cain is usable. Ooh. It's your flesh. It's usable when you develop it. You don't know what to do until you learn what not to do. Uh, I have an understanding. When Cain shows up in my life, yesterday, me and my wife was just riding in the car, and all of a sudden, a spirit just hit her. Depression just hit her just that quick. Cain comes out. But she, I said, what's wrong, baby? I, you feel tense. She said, it just came over me. Three minutes later, she was fine. Because Cain going to show up. When I would do good, evil is always present. I find a law in my member bringing me into captivity. But I understand. But if I walk not after Cain, if I walk not after the flesh, because I'm free from the law of sin and death. I'm free. I don't have to obey Cain. I can develop. I can beat my body, as Apostle Paul said, into subjection.
taking Cain with me. Why? Because God says he put a mark on Cain. That no one could kill Cain. He extended love to Cain. Nobody can do it. I'm going to put you out of some things. And in, in, in the dichotomy of Christianity is that we have not learned how to live and raise Cain. We let Cain raise us. Cain is not designed to raise you. Don't let your flesh raise you. You raise your flesh. You present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Be not conformed as well. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove, you can prove with a Cain what is good, what is acceptable, and the perfect will of God. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Very key. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for glory. Thank you for encouraging word. Thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to withdraw from the spiritual bank and to make an investment in ourselves. We know what to do with our lives. We understand now how to bring it under subjection. How to raise it to be in line with your glory. My God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I bless you for it. In Jesus' name. Now, every day of your life, you should see how to handle your cane. Don't let it rob you out of your joy anymore. Don't let it misrepresent you. You must represent God in your spirit, but you must do it on earth in your flesh. You must love your brother, not kill your brother. In your flesh is no good thing. There's nothing good in your flesh, but there's a spirit man that can win. If you cast down every imagination, pull down strongholds, every thought that exalts itself, these come from Cain. You could have a victory life on earth. Okay? Very key. God bless you. Walk in God's favor. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. We'll get to the points tomorrow. I'll start on them. If the Lord says the same, uh, we'll do a part six, living while raising Cain. I hope you've been blessed today in how to walk this walk. Don't let nobody deceive you to make you think you're so sanctified and you're so holy that you don't have a Cain that you have to battle. The battle is in your mind. The battle is the Christ mindset against the Cain mindset. But the Christ mindset wins when you allow it to be to be Lord. The Christ mindset wins when you allow him to be Lord. Okay? Love you. See you tomorrow. Same place, same time. Walk in God's favor.